What's going on everybody? It's the Hook Cam back again with another film breakdown slash player preview. Um, really quickly before I dive in, hit a thousand subscribers a couple days ago or yesterday, I can't remember, but just want to say a quick thank you to all the subs. Uh, you guys are awesome. I, I love interacting with you guys. I love talking. Everybody seems pretty positive. Um, a little bit of negativity on a couple of videos I posted, but that is to be expected. Um, nothing crazy about that. But with all that being said, seriously, I do want to thank you. There's a couple of dudes who have been here since day one. Uh, I appreciate the hell out of you guys. So um, moving on to this video, uh, Melvin Gordon signed a couple of days ago with the Denver Broncos, a little bit of shuffling going on in the AFC West. Um, and the deal was for two years, $16 million, um, 13 and a half mil guaranteed. And it really got me thinking, what happened to Melvin Gordon, man? His 15th overall pick. He's two years removed from a thousand yard season, right? 1100 yards, 58 receptions, 476, four touchdowns. Uh, this dude was on top of his game. So what really happened to him? Right? At what point was it Melvin Gordon? At what point was his offensive line? At what point was it just it was a bad fit overall? And I think a lot of it started with him holding out and the rumors swirling of him holding out, you know, probably the season previous. So diving into this, we got week 17 against the Chiefs. OK, um, what we're going to see here is a really, really simple inside zone concept going to the offense's right, um, our left on the screen. OK, and the biggie here. Right. And just this is the play side, the play side of it. We're moving guys this way. Um, I could dive into every nook and cranny of this blocking scheme. Really, the cool part about this that I like just from an offensive perspective is the handoff. And I'll just dive into this really quick because it's cool to know. When we hand this thing off, we can see that his steps are a little bit wider compared to your average inside zone where he could just be running down the midline. Why we open this way is because we want flow from backers, right? We're going to try and get them out of place. Now, that's fine and dandy, and that's great. But in order to have that, in order to be successful with this, we need to be shored up everywhere, right? So our left tackle, or excuse me, this is a six offensive lineman, so they're unbalanced right now. But this cat needs to work up into his gap, and he's got to take 59 on this, right? We need to work into our gap with 79 or whoever, and we need to take 53, right? Our left tackle here, or first tight end, whatever you want to call him, we completely whiff on 59. He gets underneath us. This play's dead from the get-go for Melvin Gordon. Right, He's into the backfield, nowhere to go, nowhere to run. I, I have a hard time putting a play like that on Melvin Gordon. Okay, And now I'm not saying that every single play is offensive line. I'm not saying every single play is Melvin Gordon. These are just a couple of examples of situations that Melvin Gordon, in the stat sheet, it doesn't look like he had a good game. But when you dive back into the tape, you can see that there's a lot of situations here where he was kind of set up for failure. So what we have here is basically a lead draw. OK, and what I want us to focus on and the reason why I'm showing it from the sideline view is our right guard. OK, and I'm going to pinpoint him for us right now. Our right guard right here. Right. He gets moved into the backfield. Mike Pennell, who had a phenomenal postseason and last couple of games uh, with the Chiefs. He gets able to move this cat into the backfield, extend his arms. Right. And he's able to make a play on this immediately. Melvin Gordon's got no shot on that. He's got no chance. Even if he does get up to the second level, there's nothing that's blocked up well for him. Right, and I, and I think this is a situation of a lot of guys uh, playing for LA being injured. Right, there's a lot of guys being injured. Okay, their center was out. I'm pretty sure their their left tackle Russell Okung's not playing right now. Right, they had a lot of guards injured, and, and that will kill a running game. You know, when you have a lot of guys who maybe they don't have the experience. I like this move right here. I like that shove at the hip. That's exactly what you teach as a coach, and then work up. That's a good block from 66. That's a good job. But our other guard got worked by Mike Pennell. We got no chance on this play. And that's got to be super frustrating for a back and for the offensive line. Okay, because some guys are blocking it up, and it's going well. Other guys aren't figuring it out, and it's hurting. Play number three on this, right? Our center and our guard. Our, our guard leaves a little too early, in my opinion little too early, and that's going to end up with uh, clogging this gap. Okay, We're going to get a really simple, again, it's an inside zone look. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the scheme on this play. We're cross-blocking on the back side. I think that leaves a lot of opportunity for 96 to come in and make a play. But our center and our guard, our guard leaves early on this, which leaves the ability for 96 to reach his arm in here and grab this. Right? See how that gap was there for a half second, and now it's gone. Okay, Because 98, excuse me, is there and ready to make the play. So a lot of it, I, I think that it ends up being on the offensive line. Okay, boom. It's a good combo. Great push from him. But we got to stay on that and work up. We can't leave this thing because now this gap is sealed because 98 is able to reach his arm in there and make a play. Right? Backer also does a great job filling on that. There's a lot of things that go into having a successful running game. A lot of guys got to be dialed in. 
And I think Melvin Gordon, when you give him the proper tools for an offensive line and for an offense, I think he's going to succeed. On this play here, again, we got a miss from our from our center or our guard on this. I believe it's our center who we, we miss the backer. Okay, and stuff like this is going to kill your play. It's going to kill it before it even starts, right? 53. Okay, we have a really simple inside zone concept. Boom, working here, working here. We're working out with our tackle. Our center's got to work up to this backer. Now, our backer sniffs this thing out. This is a great play from him. 53 almost doesn't even have a chance. Before this play's even going, we got a backer in the backfield that's pushing that ball back out to the right, which is not where you want to run inside zone these days. A lot of times inside zone, especially these days, is hitting backside. Okay, we're moving everything the other way, and a lot of times you see this thing crease backside, right? We're working out here. We're giving this wham. Well, excuse me. This is more of like a jet sweep look, but we're also giving a wham up to that second level, and we're trying to hit this thing backside. It's like a split zone, but again, that backer, fly, that backer flies in. He clogs the gap. We got nowhere to go, right? Now, here's the situation. Charger fans might be happy about this. Linval Joseph playing uh, nose tackle, excuse me, one tech for the uh, Minnesota Vikings on this just eats this play up. This is a tough block to do, okay? We're going to get wide zone to the left. Um, and Linval Joseph, man, this is tough. You've got to get, you've got to try and get your helmet onto that play side shoulder pad. And Linval Joseph does a great job of just stuffing that thing, extending his arm, and now he's right in the gap, right? Now, if you're Melvin Gordon and you're looking at this thing, where do you, where are you supposed to go? We got nowhere to go. The idea is that we've got our helmet play side here, or we're pushing him out of the way, and then the seam is right here. Right there, right? We got a great box out down here from our tackle, but there's nowhere to go on this play for Melvin Gordon. Before we place the blame on Melvin Gordon, I think that we need to look at the entirety of the situation, right? And I, and I do think that things in LA did not work out for Melvin Gordon, was, there's probably a little bit because of the contract talks. Absolutely. I'm sure that that can get under people's skin. But at the same time, we're talking about a perfect storm of, of bad injuries for the Chargers, right? And maybe guys being thrown into a position where they're not ready to play yet, right? Chris Jones here just annihilating this play. We get a missed cut on the backside from Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry's a good tight end when it comes to catching the rock. When it comes to blocking, we can't have stuff like this happen. We got a cut on that backside. Okay, so what happens on this, again, inside zone, trying to stretch this thing out a little bit. Maybe it's more of a wide zone look, actually. This is probably a weak side wide zone look. Chris Jones has now pushed this thing into the backfield, and we're running down the line of scrimmage. Last thing you want if you're an offensive lineman. Melvin Gordon's got to cut this thing back, but on the backside, Hunter Henry misses his cut. Right? Watch Hunter Henry on this play from the snap. And I understand that's Frank Clark. He's good. Boom, missed the cut. We got to get our legs going, brother. We got to get our feet going. We got to get through that cut block. We can't stop our feet. Can't stop our feet. We can see there's a lunge on that. Lunge. Big time lunge. And that's what ends up leaving Frank Clark into the backfield on that ball. Now, moving on to a little bit of what the Broncos do and why I think Melvin Gordon actually will fit, right? And I think it's just a fresh start, to be honest with you. We got to remember, Melvin Gordon played in the Big Ten. Okay? A lot of tread on those tires. Dude rushed for 2,000-something yards in a season. You're going to take your bumps and bruises when that happens. Okay? But now... Here's an example of why I like what the Broncos run, and they were hot last year near the end of the year, and part of that was their running game, okay? Obviously, they took a big loss to the Chiefs, but outside of that, Chiefs also won the Super Bowl, so you tell me, okay? What I like is that they're, they're very good with their combos on the first level, okay? Now, this play's a little unique because this nose tackle's spiking out. I don't know why, um, but 71 working up to 41 on this. this is a good job getting back in place and getting onto that second level. And that's something that I think the Chargers in a way struggled with last year because we saw a lot of times where we're missing at the second level. And that honestly, that could be young bucks in there who are still trying to get used to that NFL speed, right? But here's another situation. We got a classic, this is a, a, a double eagle actually, because we got a two backers in here. It could be a bear or double eagle. That always confused me, but on this play, right, we just have a really simple inside zone of the lead, okay? And the lead is just the fullback that we have in here. Um, and, and like I said, it's the combos and working up to the second level. So what we got, we're working here, we're working here, and we're comboing this backside and probably working up to this backer, and we're leading up to 44 with our fullback, okay? Really good tracking that thing by our fullback. And again, the reason why I think Melvin Gordon is going to succeed a little bit more in Denver uh, as opposed to the last couple years in San Diego, or excuse me, L.A., is they give them the freedom in Denver. And one thing that I noticed a lot is that they run a ton of inside zone and plays like this, where we're basically just washing down the line of scrimmage, and every team does this. But I think Denver does it a little bit better just because they're a little bit more solid with their double teams, and that could just be player personnel as opposed to coaching. 
right? But Philip Lindsay on this, right? We got nothing here. Yeah, he can stick his foot in the ground and get to that gap, but I think he trusts his speed a little bit more, creases this thing to the outside, and picks up a good gain. So I think that all in all, when you look at the situation Melvin Gordon was in and the situation he's going to be in, I think that first things first, he just needs a fresh start. I think that's the biggest thing for him. I think things probably got a little ugly with the contract talks last year. Couldn't get an extension. Fine, get out. He's out now. He's in Denver. And I think that sharing the backfield with Philip Lindsay definitely going to help him out a little bit. Again, it's not the most different situation because I think it was pretty much the same with Austin Eckler. But I think the fact that it's a fresh start, I think that they're a little bit better with their centers and guards in, in Denver, um, or at least at the end of the season they were. But all in all, I think it was a good move for Melvin Gordon. I think it was a good move for the Broncos, who are making it pretty clear that they want to hammer the rock next year. That's their goal. Denver is going to run the they could run the football 40 times a game. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, that's my breakdown on this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, could you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button? It would mean the world to me. Um, also, take a look at Jackson Kruger Sports. Hit that subscribe button. Great dude, great human being. Excited to work with him. Taking this thing to the moon. Building it brick by brick. I appreciate everything. Um, great guy. Got to check out his channel. Hit that subscribe button as well. So, with all that being said, that's all I got for you today. I'm sure there will be more trades that I will get to uh, down the road. But until next time, guys, stay safe and have a good one.